Hello, friends from Pan American Roundtable, and thank you, Bambina, for inviting me to speak to you on Founders Day. Dee and I are in Austin at the Texas inaugural, causing me to miss being with you at Artavino's Desert Crossing. It's appropriate to be there in that place because you can look up at Mount Cristo Rey and know that Mexico and the United States share that same rugged mountain. Those of you who have made the trek to the risen Christ at its top, know that upon looking down from that high summit, you can see no border at all. Here in El Paso Juarez, we live the fact that borders are something to be transcended because there are friends on the other side. My friend, Lupe de la Vega, said that borders are the scars of history. As any person with a scar is prone to do, we work to diminish it, making it as invisible as it can be. The Pan American Roundtable is based on these ideas. Wasn't Florence Griswold of San Antonio transcending borders when she formed the first table in 1916, opening her home to refugees from Mexico while selecting the motto, one for all and all for one? Wasn't Eugenia Schuster diminishing a scar when she formed Amigos Listos with Mrs. Alberto Matero, helping Mexican citizens fleeing violence and war? Pan American was founded in action, extending itself to refugees. It also was founded in education and culture, things that bring understanding and beauty to our lives. Mrs. Griswold was wise to realize that politics and business are not enough to build meaningful relationships. It takes understanding the things that are most important to us and closest to our hearts. In coming to represent Tom Lee, I became fascinated with an action the Pan American Roundtable took in 1947 when it commissioned him to paint Benito Juarez. The request caused Mr. Lee to do something he never did before, paint a portrait of a person who was no longer alive. You see, Tom Lee worked from life, reserving the pleasure of portraiture for himself. He painted subjects he chose. No one chose the subjects for him. But Pan American's request appealed to him as he considered Benito Juarez a wise and good man. Painting his portrait, he later wrote, was like the privilege of being in his presence. According to the St. Petersburg Times, on December 12, 1948, a picture of Mexico's patriot Benito Juarez soon will hang in the Blair Lee House, courtesy of the Pan American Roundtable of El Paso. Hearing that Blair House lacked a picture of Juarez, the round table commissioned an El Paso artist, Tom Lee, to paint one. Lee, a great admirer of Juarez, sought all available source material in Texas and Mexico for several months. On the back of the painting, Lee wrote in Spanish one of Juarez's sayings, peace is respect for another's rights. Why did Pan American choose to commission this portrait of Benito Juarez at this particular time? Was it only because they knew the guest, guest house for foreign visitors to the United States was lacking one? In March 1947, President Harry Truman traveled into Mexico, the first United States president to do so. The time was auspicious as it was the 100th anniversary of the Mexican-American War. When he arrived, Truman had a warm, enthusiastic welcome, telling President Miguel Aleman, if a realistic view of the world takes full account of the differences that separate nations, it must also take full account of the common beliefs that unite nations. Nowhere is this element of unity, unity of heart and mind, more evident than in the neighborly community of the American republics. The next morning, 
Truman suddenly announced he wanted to stop at Mexico City's historic Chapultepec Castle, where he laid a wreath at the foot of the monument to Los Niños Héroes, the child heroes who died when American troops stormed the castle. With that one simple gesture, Truman did more to improve the relationship between Mexico and the United States than anyone had in a century. That visit communicated everything that Pan American Roundtable stands for, and it was worthy of commemoration. In 1948, the White House was being remodeled and President Truman lived at Blair House. The painting was not sent for foreign dignitaries to enjoy. It was sent to the President of the United States. When I served President Bush from 2000 to 2008, I inquired about Tom Lee's painting at Blair House, and no one knew a thing about it. It was nowhere to be found, and sadly, I thought it had been lost. You can imagine my surprise when in, 19, in 2012, I received a call from a State Department official who had found the portrait in storage. Googling Tom Lee, he had found my name. Every year since then, we've had presentations on Benito Juarez during Tom Lee Month. The reproduction you see here was made by the Mexican consulate, which hosted one this past year. A Mexican scholar spoke about Juarez, an impoverished Zapotec Indian boy, orphaned at three, tending sheep for an uncle, receiving an education through the kindness of a family, and who rose to become the greatest president Mexico has known. What's extraordinary is that he lived here at the Pass of the North, making what is now Juarez the capital of the Republic of Mexico in 1865. Pan American Roundtable did a great thing, commemorating this history, which continues to be enlivened today. In closing, I'd like to share that John Hauser, creator of the magnificent monuments to our shared history, Oñate at the airport, Fry Garcia the San Francisco downtown, Susan McGoffin at Keystone Heritage Park, will next commemorate Benito Juarez at the Chamizal National Mem Memorial. It's a beautiful sculpture, a young Zapotec boy with his book, sitting on a bench, looking towards the future president of Mexico. It completes an agreement made over 50 years ago when Mexico commemorated Abraham Lincoln on its side of the border. Though the U.S. intended to honor Benito Juarez, it never has until now. Benito Juarez and Abraham Lincoln, great presidents with respect for the common man, have long represented the strong bonds of friendship between Mexico and the United States, just as the Pan American Roundtable always has. Thank you again for inviting me today.